In the meantime, let's take a look and speak with David Wright, president, owner, Wright Financial Group. Let's talk about um, the outlook that you're having. There is some concern about a slowdown as we are bumping up against records. Where do you stand and what's driving it? I think uh, continues to be consumer debt. Uh, the housing market slowing down. We got some good data on that this week. The market's slowing down in the housing, but the median price of houses are, are rising just due to lack of supply. A consumer debt continues to climb 1.2 trillion. And long as that government uh, debt at 35 trillion and growing, we're not bringing in what we're, we're spending. All of those things, all of those pressures are creating, you know, uh, this, uh, this worry about too much debt in our uh, economy right now. What's interesting is so many people buying homes with cash. And when you think about the cash that's sitting on the sidelines, you know, when will people yeah. put that to work? I don't know. I think that when you look at the M2 supply of money, there's so much cash that's still out there in, in money markets and CDs. Uh, even uh, I think it's estimated now that the Fed still have about $7.3 trillion on their balance sheet. But with all that money out there uh, still chasing some goods, we still see the economy floating uh, around for a while. Obviously, this triple witching you're talking about today, uh, it's, it's obvious that there's other factors that force in the stock market. But with credit cards climbing and uh, another $3 trillion, uh, that's usable on those credit cards, who knows how far uh, this economy is going to stay afloat. But I do believe, based on the slowing we have uh, in the future with uh, th this higher for longer mantra, I believe that the feds are going to be forced at some point uh, to, to lower rates. I still think the uh, later in the year, uh, September and uh, November, December time horizon, they'll, they'll be cutting. They're going to have to cut. But I think there's other forces out there that may force them to cut other than just uh, the consumer. The banking situation is not getting any better. One of our regional Ohio banks, I'll remain uh, unnamed for the moment, uh, just sold off a bunch of bad debt to a hedge fund down in Florida, uh, basically selling off some bad debt to, to maintain their, their status. So you see some things going on in the banking industry that are indicative, look a lot like 2008 all over again. But when you add to that the petrodollar situation, that expired in June this year between the Saudis and our country. Now all bets are off the table because the U.S. may not always be the world's reserve currency. It might be a situation where we see a weaker dollar in the future, which could end up creating much more inflationary pressures on the U.S. Uh, population. Yeah, understood. So what's your advice to investors? How do they uh, make some money this year? I think they just need to remain defensive, uh, understand that the presidential election, you know, one way or the other, uh, you're going to have to shift between green and perhaps more oil, coal uh, type stocks, but continue to be very, very defensive. Look for those things that pay you an income stream that are purpose over performance and, uh, you know, basically work with an advisor that knows what they're doing and can, can create uh, the, the right situations for income production. So at this point, you, you talked about some of the other things. I mean, next week we'll get PCE, um, Nike, uh, GDP, Kevin mentioned. But you, you retail sales was something that jumped out at you. I mean, does the consumer have somehow they're still buying discretionary items? But, you know, what kind of power does the consumer have or not have? Well, the consumer does have power. Obviously, they have the power of their credit card. Uh, but at what point does that power diminish when credit card companies start having more uh, credit card delinquencies, more auto loan delinquencies, foreclosures on mortgages? At what point do credit card companies start to back up that excess amount of usable, spendable credit limits so that they force their credit card users to stop spending? So the consumer, yes, has a lot of power, but I think uh, when you look at all of the pressures that are coming down the road with all of the debt we've accumulated as a country, both personally and consumer, as well as the government, we're gonna be forced to uh, reduce some of the interest uh, and cut some rates here so that we can get a little bit of breathing room for the banks and uh, for the overall economy. 
Right. You do still have concerns about inflation reigniting and such. Um, when you talk about trying to stay defensive in a portfolio, what kind of things would that be? Well, it would mean for sure that universe of stocks that are more income-based, more uh, dividend-oriented. Uh, we like uh, a lot of preferred stock names. Uh, those names could be found on our website, but uh, lots, lots of uh, securities that can reproduce income from the shares they're owned. The shares can fluctuate up or down in value, but still create an interest or dividend yield that is uh, not uh, dependent upon the share price so much. We're looking at those types of securities for those clients that want to test their water, you know, test the, the markets in, in more of the AI stocks, they can do that. But you can see what happens today uh, to those individuals. So the money that's in those stocks are for more of the long-term players that are a little bit more speculative, looking for uh, long-term growth. So uh, we remain defensive. Uh, corporate bonds, you got to be careful right now uh, at what level you purchase uh, with inflation uh, concerns uh, down the road. Yeah, good warnings there. David Wright of Wright Financial Group, thank you so much. Wonderful to see you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Nicole. Good to see you, too.